Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a walkthrough video for Simplifying Expressions, Sheet 6-1. This is from MassSalmanders.com. Make sure to check out MassSalmanders in the link in the description below. They have awesome math resources, and one I, uh, one reason I particularly like MassSalmanders is they have great scaffolding, probably the best scaffolded worksheets. You can look at the examples and the format they give you and really kind of learn it on your own for the most part. But in case you can't, that's what this video is for. So you can see I have a bunch of things drawn at the bottom here. That is a setup for number one. I'm going to explain how we approach this problem right here and how we can visualize it. One of the easiest ways I like to visualize variables is when we're talking about candy bags. So the original problem that I had above for number one was 7a plus four plus eight. And I can visualize this with candy bags and then individual uh, wrapped candy. So <clears throat> with the 7A, what that's talking about is we have seven bags of candy. How much is in each bag? We don't know. That's why there's a variable there is because it represents an unknown amount. So each one of these bags of candy have the same amount of candy, but we don't know how much is in it. Then we have four candies right here. And then we have eight individually wrapped uh, candies right there. So what is the process? How do we simplify this? Well, we do know that we could combine these to get 12. Okay, that's pretty apparent. We have 4 plus 8, and that gives us 12. But then we still have that 7a. So what do we do from here? Now, if you're thinking, hey, I could just go like this. 7 plus 12 is 19. The problem with that is, even though we get a simplified one-term answer, is that's assuming each one of these bags of candy, or, uh, yes, has one piece in each one, okay? And that's just simply not known. It could be the case. Maybe each bag only has one piece of candy, but we can't assume that. So we can't say that 19 is the answer for this particular problem. Now, let's consider something else. Let's move this over. We know 19 is a no-go because we don't know. What if we say, okay, well, I can say that this is 19a. This is the most common answer I see. People see the 7, people see the 12, and they write 17, or sorry, 19 after the atom, and they just like, hey, there's an A there, I need to include it somehow. But that's saying we have 19 bags of candy. So you're assuming that each one of these candies would make a complete bag, and that's simply not known either. So we can't say that it's 19 bags. So we have a problem here. We have um, 19 and 19a that are both not the answer. So what do we do? Well, the answer is simply going to be 7a plus 12. There's just not more steps we can take from there. So we can just go ahead and write 7a plus 12, and that's it. There's still an unknown amount, but we do know that we can add the 4 and the 8 together and that gives us 12. However, because this has a variable in it, we, can, can, we cannot combine the a or the variables with these numbers, which are called constants. The example above talks about the exact same process. We have the x's right here, and you always want to make sure you include that sign that's in front of the x. I'm going to talk about why that's important later on. Okay, And then we have these constants, I'll use purple this time, right here. And notice how the first step in this example is to regroup them so that they're next to each other, the x's with the x's and the numbers with the numbers, okay? Or the variables with the variables and the constants, numbers without a variable are called constants with the constants. That way, we essentially grab the candy bags, put them together, grab the individually wrapped candies, put them together, and then we can make a better assessment. So let's continue number two, and we're going to use this same pattern of thinking. So first, I'm going to just highlight with the sign in front all these variables, and then I'm going to highlight all my numbers. Okay, so from here, I'm going to regroup them all together. I have b plus b plus b. Now, when students see this b, they're kind of confused. What's the number in front of it? Anytime you see a variable by itself, okay, it could be x, it could be c or b in this case, it really is equal to 1x is equal to 1c. However, because 1 times, this is implied multiplication here, because 1 times any variable is just a variable, 
you can get away with, <clears throat> pardon me, you can get away with just writing the variable. So we have b plus b plus b, or that's equal to 1b plus 1b plus 1b. I'll go ahead and write that just so you can see that it's equal to the same thing. Okay, so I write those next to each other, and then I'm gonna write the plus five at the end. And I think it's pretty clear that we are not gonna be able to add that five to anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and write over here, plus five. Okay, I only have five individually wrapped candies, and then I have three bags of candies added all together. One plus one plus one is three. I need the B there, and I'm done. Three B plus five is the simplest I can get this expression. Okay, let's continue with a few other ones. Number three is fairly easy, especially if you consider that this is a one in front of that C. Let's do one that has some subtraction. So number four, this one appears um, easier on the surface than it actually is. Okay, but I, sometimes I like to underline. If you don't have a highlighter handy, it's easy to just underline. And then maybe use some sort of uh, differentiating uh, underline for the constants. So I have D plus D. Do not forget the sign in front of each variable. And then I have plus 7. Okay, that was my double underline. There's a plus in front of that. And then minus 8. Very important that you keep that minus in front of that 8. It needs to travel with it. So as we add these together, I'm going to have D plus D is 2D. And then I have 7 minus 8. That gives me a minus 1. Okay, so this one has some integer math in it. So if you're unfamiliar with integers, make sure to check out one of my videos on integers. Mass and Elementors covers that too. Moving on to another problem. Let's see. Let's go to a little bit tougher now to complete our set. Um, here's one. Okay, we'll do number 12 real fast. So number 12, okay, we have a negative 4 and a minus 5. So I'm going to put those next to each other. And then I have 5m and minus 3m. See how this time I circled instead of underline? You can do anything you need to. I just really like to differentiate my variables from my constants. And another thing, too, is if I have more than one variable, like an m and an x, you need to make sure you separate those out as well. Put the m's by each other and put the x's by each other because essentially what that would mean, okay, so if I had an m, that's a bag of candy, and maybe the x is a bigger bag of candy. So you can't say that they have the same amount if one is a different size, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind for a future exercise. So I have 5m minus 3m right there, first step, 2m, and then negative 4 minus 5, that gives me negative 9, or just minus 9 at the end. Okay, let's do one with uh, parentheses, and then we'll do number 15 and number 19, and we'll call it a day. So your first instinct is like, okay, I have uh, 4q, and then I have a minus 2, and then plus q. I have to see a lot of students do that, and that is incorrect because this minus sign is in front of that parenthesis. If it's in front of that parenthesis, then everything in purple needs to get a minus sign. Everything needs to be subtracted from 4q. So I need to rewrite this first without parentheses. So we have 4q minus 2 and then also minus the Q. You gotta subtract both. And this is known as the distributive property. So I need to distribute that minus sign to both terms or all the terms inside the parentheses. Now that I'm here, I can rearrange. So 4Q minus Q and then minus two. I know 4Q minus Q, a lot of times what I see people do here is they're like, oh, if I take away the Q, I'm just left with four. That is not the case. You really need to treat it as 4Q minus one Q is 4 minus 3, I'm sorry, 4 minus 1 is 3, and then it's just bags, okay, the Q bags. So that's the label, and then we have minus 2 tagged on at the end, and that's our answer. Okay, last problem, we have 4U plus 7 minus 5 plus 7U. Again, we need to use this distributive property first. We need to rewrite this without parentheses. Now, because uh, for the first set of parentheses, we can't add anything inside. We can't combine bags of candy with individually wrapped candy. We can just go ahead and get rid of the parentheses. Okay, there's nothing we're multiplying out in front. There's no minus sign. So we can go ahead and get rid of it. Now, the second parentheses we can get rid of after we distribute. So we distribute the minus to minus 5 and also minus 7u. Okay, now one thing that you may notice is you don't necessarily need to rewrite this every time and do 4u minus 7u next to each other. 
if you get good at this and you recognize that it's a minus 7u, you could just underline it and say, okay, 4u minus 7u, I know that's negative 3u because the 7 is negative and it's bigger than the 4. And then I have this one, let me just do like squiggly underline, and I have 7 minus 5 and that's equal to positive 2, and there you go. You don't need to necessarily rewrite it, I don't, but I like how that's probably a good first step for students, which was the example here. So that's all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out more videos like this on my YouTube channel. Leave a comment if you need additional help on any of these problems, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.